Hey, Ronnie Val for Wheeling Australia. I'm here at Jacob Farm and we have one of the coolest Jeeps that I've ever seen. I've had a bit of a ride on this yesterday. This thing is nuts. I don't think there's too much Jeep left on it, but let's go through that very soon and have a look. We have CB. Step in, mate. G'day, Ronnie. How are you, CB? Good, man. Welcome to Jacob Farm, SA. Cheers, mate. Off-road training Australia. Which happens here as well? Yep, at the park. So you're one of the main guys here? Yep, was two or three of us doing the training. So we've got the day facilities people can run around the park and do their bits and pieces. And then um, we offer different RTO courses from mining companies through to earth moving, etc. Et I see that a whole lot. The whole lot. Yeah. And even beginners, you buy your new Ford Ranger um, in the showroom, bring it up here, we'll get you going. Rescue, cool. um, recovery, all that awesome. sort of stuff. This Jeep, what's it set up for? Initially built hardcore four-wheel driving West Coast Tassie high country, semi-comp truck, not going to compete, don't have the budget, but I wanted to be able to follow comp truck. I think you've pretty much got that down. <laughs> Thanks, from, Ronnie. From what we saw yesterday, yeah. far out. Um, all right, so how much percentage of this is still Jeep, you reckon? That's Jeep, but it's aftermarket, it's blacked out. Uh, basically, chassis is Jeep, body's Jeep, everything else is rebuilt, and, and that's the way I knew coming into the project, I was going to have to spend a lot of money to get it right because it is Jeep. Mm. Prior to that, I've been Nissan, Toyota, etc. So I knew that you'd be silly to come and get a Jeep and do this without the budget to do it two or three times. And that, that's pretty much what's happened. I've had to, one set of suspension, gone wrecked, one set of this, gone wrecked, this, that. You've it's been a, a lot of things yep, and gone yep, through a lot of yep. stuff. And six years on, she's finished. Six years on? Eight. Well, actually 2010 oh wow what motor uh it's the same as your dad's motor actually the 3.8 um, v6 but it got dusted in cape york the air cleaner failed totally um, air came through the actual jeep filament we had it rebuilt with no jeep in it just custom rod motor so it's supercharged intercooled and forged everything modified cam hollow top pistons we'll get to that when we get to the engine yeah. then it's a manual or automatic? A uh, six-speed manual, it's got to be, it's a Jeep. There's a fair bit on this vehicle, it's quite a short vehicle, short wheelbase, but Shorty. there's a lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of stuff. This bar, what is this? Bar is a chopped down, originally it was um, out to here, um, AEV, which is American Expedition Vehicles. I don't know if you've heard of the brand, but no. yeah, it's kind of the ARB of America in Jeep. Um, the guy, Paul Harrigan, who started the company, used to work for Jeep as an engineer. So he's crazy. He got the CAD drawings to the JK before it came out. Jeep gave him the whole car, and he designed all this stuff on his computer two years prior to release. Cool. Uh, he's made the, that, suspension components, etc., and a wicked back bumper bar, which we can look at later. It's probably the best feature on the Jeep. Warm winch on Dyneema rope. What Correct. size is it? 9,500. And that'll be more than... More than enough for this yep. vehicle. Correct. It is actually pretty heavy, isn't it? Uh, now it's had it's engineered with a GVM upgrade, so loaded camping. I weighed it the other day when we went across the Nullarbor. It was 2.9 ton. Wow, that's getting out there for a small yep. car, isn't it? And GVM upgrade. I think GVM's 2200 for the shorty. So I got a 750 upgrade with a 37 supercharger, um, lift, etc. When I got it engineered. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive yeah, too. But most of the weight that. is in the axles, drive shafts and down low, because mm. that's where you need it because of the power of the supercharger. I kept snapping axles and tail shafts and drive shafts and all right. it's all good now. We'll get to all that. Mm. Side rails. I uh, took them off. You probably don't even, don't even need them, do you? No, it, being a shorty, um, Rub, this is the Rubicon model, no stickers, but hence JK Ruby. It had steel rock slides, that's part of the Rubicon package. Oh, they come standard with them. Yep, they come standard. But in the effort to save weight and keep centre of gravity low, um, I re-engineered the brackets and went and got the base model plastic steps and put them on. But I still got a bracket that I can put into the actual side step steel bit mm -hmm. and high lift the jack off the underneath uh. of the plastic. So if I ever smash a plastic, there's heaps of them lying around the back of TJ and ARB, I can just go and get another plastic step. And that's, it saved like 50 kilos. That's really interesting. That's the first time I've ever heard someone go the other way around. Yeah. But you obviously don't need them. Yeah, well everything on the car, being a shorty, has to have two purposes, or mm. it doesn't go on the car. 
Fair enough. That's at a rear bar, and I have an extra camera here because there is so much going on. What may seem just like a, a rear bar from looking at it from the outside, once you've pointed out everything, let's go through it. Cool. It's, it's crazy, the amount of stuff that's on here. Yeah. So for me, Ronnie, I guess it was about, I didn't want to do an external roof rack because Jeep is soft top. For me, that's what Jeep is. It's, a soft, it's the only soft top four wheel drive in the world. So I wanted to keep the heritage of Jeep. So I didn't want to put all the stuff on the rack. So I had to find a solution where I could put all my stuff somewhere else. And this is what it is. So again, like the Bull Bar, AEV is the brand. Starts with a bumper, um, like most bumpers. Um, you've got your bash points, etc., etc. You've got a tow hitch, stuff like that. But where he's got clever is to save space, where there's wasted space, he's molded out of kayak type material water tanks. It's empty right now because we've been at camp. Um, and there's one on the other side. How many um, litres in each? Uh, 20 all up. Yeah. And if you look underneath, there's just a little tap plumbed. Whoops. <laughs> so she's plumbed up under gravity. So nice and simple. Notice something down here. So yep. this returns to chassis Yeah, it returns the chassis to chassis. Here. So you can, I've had it bruised and dropped off waterfalls and taken the weight of the car. You can high lift jack off this thing. It's ridiculously strong. Yeah, and clearly tow points, rated shackle tow points as well. Where do you get these from? Daystar. Okay. You can get anything in America. Jeep is like Meccano set or Lego. You so a lot, a lot of stuff in here is basically American. I've ordered it all offline and luckily I did it in 2010 when we had dollar parity. So I built a spreadsheet probably two years before I bought the car in 2010, in 08, yeah. and just lined the spreadsheet with all my choices and links to websites and prices. And it was built on a spreadsheet. And then I went and bought the stock car and went from there. Cool. So if you come around this side, um, you can see the weight of the actual, all the tire and all the gear on it is actually taken through a massive brass bush, which is greasable. And that runs through the chassis. So that's where the weight's taken. Wow, so everything's connected here. So yep. this one goes into the chassis, yep. that goes into the chassis. Yep. And the tank's molded in and around that. That's cool. It's just crazy. It still opens in with the door? Yep, so unlike, you know, like your standard Land Cruiser Nissan stuff, which I've had in the past, it's one action. So it's off the door, yep. there you go. Yeah, that's cool. It's linked to the door. There's like a little parallelogram type linkage in there. And then there's a little, um, nylon bush which stops it rattling oh, yeah, this so one it's, here. it's adjustable so when it slams shut it seats up and it's all one system once it's slammed shut okay so then i guess it allows him to put into the system crazy but a long handle shovel so, so that's, that's not tied in it's not tied in it's been all around australia it just fits just gravity so again one less thing to go wrong there's no straps there's no latches no nothing it just stays there it's pretty cool um Steel rod running the whole way up for brake light, which I guess is a legality. Jadinsky spotties, one spread for camp, one spotty for reverse. CB error there, don't ask me the DBD or gang, it works. Looks like a three. Is it? Cool, that's a three, now I know. Or a uh, <laughs> It works. And sand flag, you know, the old. That's a water tank. No, oh. it's fuel. That's fuel? Gallons, US gallons fuel, oh. so it's, it's actually fuel. So it gives me another 40 litres. Again, to keep things simple, there's no taps or pipes. They supply you with a, a jiggler siphon. Ah. So you just put the jiggler in through the tank and jiggle away you go. Oh, because that's right there. Yeah, it's right there. So basically, so you go from there? Yeah. To there? Yeah, close her up, jiggle it in, 40 litres, away you go. The very rear of it is some of my work. This is just a um, Toole bike rack for um, mountain bikes. And I just reversed it over and Clearly had to modify the mount to take the 37 to get it centered. Max tracks on top. Black and ones. that's also my roof rack. So if I want to collect firewood and stuff like that, I can chuck a heap of firewood up on top. Just of on that. top of your max tracks? Yeah, just another Oki strap or something. Mm. Heaps, heaps of firewood. Got your high lift here too. And high lift jacks there as well. And what, you got some soap. Got truck wash there. Good for hands and good for dishes. <laughs> <laughs> That's truck wash. Is this like an extension for your arm on the... No, that's pilot? the side step I was talking about. So, do you want to do it that side or this way? Oh, we do that side. Yep. So basically, high lift jack foot engages. That foot type thing engages on that, so it can't slip. Oh, uh, yeah. Like so, when you're using it. And I haven't got the pins in the drawer, but basically, the steps I talked about, I've made a massive bracket back to chassis and you pull that rubber cap off there, and that basically slides in, ah. pin it, or that way, pin it, 
and then you can jack your car from the side. Okay. So I lost that ability when I took the steel sliders off, mm. but I made sure I retained it with the way I designed it. This is the most excited I've been shooting a Jeep. Well, you're normally frustrated with your dads from what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about a roof rack. It's not really a roof rack. Well, it is a roof rack. It's a soft roof rack. Kangaroo pouch. Okay, so that's what it's called? Yeah. Or is that what you did That's you? what I call it. Dad oh. actually invented it. We were away on a trip and he said, CB, I chuck my swag on my Land Cruiser roof rack, half assembled, so then you can just throw it out, put a pole in, it's ready to go. He said, we've got to find a solution for your soft top Jeep. You don't want a roof rack. Why don't you do a kangaroo pouch? So I went to a marine boat place and had to make up some buckles sewn into the rooftop and then a zip across the soft top mm -hmm. and then the pouch over the back. So what it means is a couple of Oki straps, fold your swag up with the, what, what, the end poles in. So you just fold your swag up, end poles are in, sleeping That's bags cool. in there, pillows in there, it's ready to go. Yeah. Just take the center post out, um, just chuck it up, strap it on, you're ready to go. That night, under your straps, chuck the swag on the ground, the poles are in, put the spreader bar in, about, I got a guy to time it the other day, it was 55 seconds. Nice. And your swag's set up. Is this like a quick release for the roof or is this how they are? All soft top Jeeps have that sunroof ability, so basically it's just a, a fold back. All right, so they just, they sunroof. all use this mouse, okay. Yep, that's So, so that is actually Jeep. That, yeah, that's <laughs> Jeep and this is Jeep, it's just the buckles and stuff I had custom made from a, a boat canvas guy. We already spoke about your comms on the back. So let's yep. just include lights here. So we have 50 inch. Yep. Rigid Industries. Correct. Double row light bar. Does that throw light back at you in a white bonnet? Yeah, I guess that's why I've left the covers on. I don't really use it anymore. I don't do a lot of night driving anymore. Okay. Uh, I've got the spotties on the front. And when I do need, I'll just take the clips off. And I've got the nine inch LEDs on, up the front. They throw out a decent amount of light? 800 meters. Mm. That's all you need. If you're, if you're playing around in the dark, you'd probably be in a place like this anyway, wouldn't you? No, I, I'm rarely in the park and driving the park. I'm only expedition overland, so high country, west coast of Tassie, stuff like that. Okay. But we, we like to camp at three or four in the afternoon, so I, I'm not like you. <laughs> I'm not a night driver. I, Fair enough. That's a young man's sport. We like to be around the fire by three or four and just chilling out. Yeah. Just taking what we're there for. Fair enough. Yeah. I'll, uh, you just call me young, I'll take that. <laughs> These are upgrades, obviously. Yeah, everything on the car is LED. So top to bottom is LED. Well, visibility is one thing, but it was more around comfort. Being a Jeep, sometimes stuff comes on, ignition stuff that shouldn't be on, doors lock that shouldn't lock. That's a Jeep, man, they just have gremlins. So I didn't want to have lights on all night, flat battery. Mm -hmm. So basically I can leave every light on this car, I've tried it all night and I can still start the car. There is a lot going on with this vehicle, especially with the drive line and the tyres and the suspension. So I'm going to break this up into three. We'll start with the tyres. You run a different set of tyres for Victoria High Country, which is sort of rocky stuff for you know, people. Mud and rocks. Mud and rocks. And then you have this combo here, which is for sand. Great. They're both 37s and the car's been engineered for 37 inch tyres, hence all the bigger diffs, etc. we can talk about later. 20 inch rim. So I wanted to keep a reasonably low profile for on-road handling and then an all-terrain Mickey Thompson um, tread pattern which is goes good in sand, goes really good in sand. And these are the aggressive all-terrains? Yeah. How do you wrap these? Excellent. On the highway, in the rocks, the hook up, balance beautiful. I'd get another set for That's sure. That's pretty good for a 37 to balance. To balance you can, yeah, you can balance them. Yeah, it's crazy that you can. So you said these are 20 inch rims. XD Rockstars. Kind of got them to get as open as I could, get airflow into the brakes, because obviously the car's now about 2.9 tonne loaded, so it needs the bigger brakes to, to pull up. And, and that was part of the engineering package, the Willwood brakes. Fair enough. So your other set, what are they? Uh, same 37, they're a Pro Comp, extreme mud terrain, so pure muddy on a 17 inch rim, Pro Comp rim. So less rock ration stuff and for high country and Tassie, that sort of stuff. And a lot of rubber. A lot of rubber. <laughs> a lot of grip. They hook up really well. What PSI would you put these on for a place like this where it's a bit of rocky, a bit of sandy? Yeah, so right now, 14 on the front and 16 on the back. 
Wow. And it's still, it's not even bagging that much. No. Nice. And sand I run now as low as eights and nines. Okay. Mm. And then it really hooks it. up. Yeah. This thing, there's not much will follow it in sand. And there are no bead locks on these because you can't engineer bead locks. You cannot legally engineer bead lock legally. In Australia. Yeah. And I like to have my car insured. Yeah. So that's why there's no bead locks. Yeah. I would be love to have them. First question. Yeah, I would love to have them. The but I, I value my, my third party insurance more than um, performance of bead locks. Now to the suspension. And there is a lot going on here. Now there are some other components you'll see. They will be discussed in driveline. Suspension. Did you order the old man emu BP51 out of America or did you buy it here? Um, they sell them here. It's, a, it's only for a four inch lift um, around clearances and stuff like that. So they do sell them for a four inch lift? They do, but they, okay. you, you're on your own around engineering. They don't, they don't guarantee them or give them any engineering certificates. So they'll, they'll sell them to you, mm -hmm. but you, it's not your responsibility to get them engineered. Okay. Interesting. Yep. They're the fourth set of shocks I had on it. All right, let's go through and start off with number one. <laughs> uh, AEV suspension kit initially was on the car, and that came with a whole lot of correction brackets around panard rods, um, drop brackets on the, the front control arms, etc., etc. So what you'll probably see is everything on the car, even though it's lifted, um, f was four inches, it's all parallel. So it's all back to factory spec. Um, parallel so there's no bump steers no bad handling on the road it just ri it rides like a standard jeep on mm. 37s so so to answer your question started with uh, Bill Stein single shocks went to Bill Stein double remote shocks uh, they didn't handle it went to Coney they didn't handle it went to Fox Racing 2.5 remotes they were okay and then um, a guy put me onto from a Jeep specialist actually the BP 51s and since I've got that that is one thing that's actually changed the car mm. they, are, they are awesome that and the hydraulic bump stops I'd have to say are one of my favorite mods on the car so just explain to people what a hydraulic bump stop is okay so normally any car would have a rubber bump stop mm. so we've all done it we've been driving along a track and we don't see that ditch or that wash away on a beach and it's that horrible bang when the car hits the bottom mm -hmm. it upsets the car can bend your axle and stuff like that the difference with these ones are they're still in the same place inside the coil but you can probably see that it's a piston so it's really a modified shock absorber so that last three inches of travel when it all turns to shit sorry about that um, it soaks it up hydraulically so the car can land a jump squat kind of like a cat doesn't Allow upset the car to, it's like landing on bent legs yep like like a cat would do mm. and then you can just accelerate out of it so it's often the key in the start of a sand dune you know you can have as much momentum as you want to try and get on a sand dune yeah, but if you get that bump and hit into the face of the dune you've washed off all your speed and bent, bent your mm. front axle this thing go they're king coils and they're about my third or fourth set of coils as well. I initially had it engineered for a four inch lift and I've spent the last two years trying to get it lower. Um, since I put the flat fenders on, I've got more up travel um, room other than the pocket ones. So I've gone back to a three inch lift all around. Is that all the suspension covered pretty much? Suspension wise? Yeah. You got the, these, you got the anti-rock, so you got okay, the yeah. sway bar. And, uh, cool. They, yeah, Rubicon comes with a, a sway bar disconnect, like electric yeah, motor automatic, in there, eh? Rubicon. Yeah. It failed, Jeep, <laughs> okay. um, up at Cape York. And not only did it fail, it actually stopped the whole car. Oh. It killed the car. That's a safety thing. And we went to the dealer, got it towed to the dealer, and they said that's part of the oh, safety no. system of the car. There wasn't yeah. even a click on the key. Tick, tick, there was nothing. Wow. The whole car was dead, and it was just the sway bar motor. Okay, that's scary. Yeah, so I got rid of it, and this is a Curry Anti-Rock, which is a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. So it allows a lot more articulation and I don't know if you know, but... So you don't have to actually pull them out, you leave them in? Leave them in the whole time, on-road and off-road, yeah, and that okay. still give you heaps of it. They race a lot of them in King of the Hammers and stuff like that, you see them on the back of the buggies. We are laying underneath the vehicle, in the shade, out of the wind, and we're going to talk about driveline. So Dana 60 front and rear. Are they Ford 9-inch diffs? Pretty much the equivalent. That's the easy way to think of it in the, in the Ford world. Mm. 
and that was the requirement to run 37 inch tyres. I've had a 9 inch Ford diff in a Falcon before yeah. and that was unbreakable. Yep. The actual bearings on, on the wheels, because I've done a few bearings on them now and seals, they are identical to Ford 9 inch. So when you go to the bearing wholesaler place, you ask for a Ford 9 inch bearing and, and oil seal. Okay. Yeah, axle seal. So it's pretty much the same thing. Yep. And the, the ones that were on it, although Rubicon gets Dana 44, um, I toasted both of them um, quite early on with a supercharger and the power the motor's making. Ooh. So they didn't last that long. And on the front, you have those nice orangey things. I've been dreaming about putting those in RCV. my front for a long time. Yes, the yeah. RCV. Chrome, Molly, CV axles all the way into the diff centre, yeah. which is the 9-inch diff. Yeah. That's one thing that's made in America that is unbreakable, unlike most other things. They're rated to up to 1,000 horsepower and racing. So you're allowed to race them as long as you don't put more than 1,000 horsepower, and they're guaranteed for life. Nice. Yeah. That's confidence. Yep. You need it for your cruiser, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the weak point is the, the front centre, though. <laughs> yeah, true that. Drive shafts. So being a shorty, given the amount of flex it has in the back and the very short tail shaft, it has to be double carbon. Instead of having one universal joint, which allows it to flex, uh -huh. it's got a universal joint backed up by another universal joint. Right. So it's kind of a piggyback universal joint. Okay. So it allows it to operate at extreme angles, mm -hmm. being a short wheelbase. So that's double carbon. And they were rated, I think the Spice, I think Sabrand or something, um, the 1310 was the rating. Um, I've blown two or three tail shafts again on some horrible tracks at the wrong moments during wheel stands and stuff, okay. it's not pleasant. And I've upgraded now the tail shaft to 1350 universals and bigger shafts. So, okay. so that's kind of like a Ford F250 would run now. I'm running, pretty much all my gear is Ford F250 equivalent. There's a lot of power and torque now and, and also just the fact that the 37s and the low low gearing on this, it's got an 80 to 1 reduction transfer case. So first gear is ridiculously low. Oh, I noticed that. And if you're in full traction on rocks, the amount of torque that's multiplied through the drive line is just mm. not worth thinking about and that breaks stuff. So hence the strength that is needed. First gear low on a Land Cruiser of 35s is extremely slow as well, but I think <laughs> you're in second gear low and I'm still catching you. Correct. Yep. Coming in here. Yeah, you'll well at first gear low, idle at 800 RPM, you'll walk much faster than it. Under the hood. Now I know how to open these. I've opened my old man's one many times to have a look at problems. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Problems? Yeah. It's a Jeep. This is a nice looking motor. So that's your supercharger on top there. There's not much in here that's original. Yeah, so sad story, and this is probably for Jeep Australia to listen to. The standard air cleaner paper filament fails. Cape York came back from a trip up there, bull dust. Mechanic did a quick service on it and said, you better come in the workshop. Your engine's destroyed. Full of dust. Full that's of dust. The oil was just like... So it happened to my dad's Jeep. That's why it's air now filter. redone in a stroke. Yep. Air filter. So clearly now it's got an aftermarket air raid filter in it that works. Jeep wouldn't come with the guarantee. Shannon's Insurance initially walked away from it too because they said in their clauses they don't cover mechanical failure. Oh. Um, to their credit, after a lot of negotiation, after six or seven months of the car off the road, um, they came to the party and we convinced them that it's not a moving mechanical part. It's a particulate filter, just like your diesel fuel filter mm. is the same thing, so they cover that. I said to the mechanic who put the supercharger, I said, do not put one Jeep. I said, what we're going to do is quote it for Jeep parts to rebuild it, because we know it'll be hell expensive, because Jeep are. Um, but we're, not, we're going to get a check off them, and we're not going to put one Jeep part in the motor. And then we went and built a rod motor, basically. So it's forged pistons, custom this, hollow top, that, elliptical bearings. There's very little Jeep left in it. Clearly it's had to be honed out a little bit, so hence the four litre stickers on the side. So it's now a four litre, another 3.8. Because we had the supercharger already, he built and designed the, the engine around the supercharger. So the camshaft is suited to it. As I said, hollow top pistons, etc. And when we re dynoed it after it was put back together, and then we put extractors, it's got long tube header extractors out of the US on it as well. And then when we dynoed it from 
what was an original motor because we did the figures before the supercharger went on the standard motor and the finished motor. We used the same dyno. It pulled the torque curve down by 2,000 RPM from 4,000 down to 2. Power curve was about down by the same amount. But pleasingly, power went up by 110% power off the factory. And on the brochure, it's got like 150 at the flywheel. So I guess now it's got 330 at the flywheel. But the torque went up by 120% mm. and way down the low. That's pretty good for petrol. Yeah, so it's, it's probably my favourite thing on the car now. The key for a petrol to get torque would be a supercharger, right? You get the air in straight away. Yeah, so it's belt driven. So there's a bit of parasitic loss off the engine because it's got to drive the, the turbine, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But basically, air comes in through the supercharger, it gets compressed and would normally come out at, I don't know, 120 degrees Celsius, quite hot because you're compressing air. That's when you need the inner cooler because you don't want hot air going in your engine. So it goes into an air to water inner cooler through that heat exchanger and then back into the inlet manifold. And that goes back in at about ambient temperature, 35 degrees Celsius. And we just kept it really mild. It's got, I think, 12 PSI boost. That's it. So it's a really safe motor. Is it pretty waterproof, this motor as well? Bomb proof, yeah. I've had it over the bonnet many times in the yeah. high country. Yeah, one thing the Jeeps do is the ECUs and stuff over near you, they're really well sealed. And <laughs> unlike your cruisers, this is one thing the Jeep has over oh, yeah. Toyota. It's one of the few things. The alternator's in the right place yeah. from factory. Two batteries or one here? Yeah, the dual battery, that's... Um, Where's the other one? That's a cranker. It's behind the passenger seat in the cargo area. Oh, okay. Diff breathers from your Dana diffs over there. Okay. Transfer case, gearbox and both diffs. And your horns. <laughs> I haven't heard those yet. No, nah, bit of bling. <laughs> like a truck horn? Or? Yeah, well, it looks like a truck. It's got to sound like yeah. a truck. Bonnet's aftermarket too. You might not have noticed that. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, actually. again, that's an AEV, same brand as a bull bar and that. This mm. guy presses them. They look like factory because they're fully pressed like a, like a factory one. As you'd imagine, air comes out of the front of the car, hits this lip, and then it creates like an eddy, like a, a reverse waterfall. So it actually sucks air out. Pulls the air so out. So the, the hot air that's in the front of your radiator and that pulls it out. And these vents on the side that allow cool air in. Yeah, so it's a, a So it runs really cool then? Runs really cool, man. Like, do, you have, uh, do you have numbers on your cold water temp? No, it just sits, the needle of the gauge sits in the middle. And I imagine that's around 95 degrees. The mechanics have measured it. What size exhaust have you put through it? Because you've got the extractors. Yeah, extractors into... To Two and a half inch stainless all the way through. And two, two and a half is what, is it? what you recommend for yeah. this motor? Correct. Cool. But with a supercharger. I hope you guys got a notepad. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> <laughs> now to the back of the Jeep. And this is where you'll see that it's not just a toy, it's also a Tura. A Tura. Let's get to it. Uh, start from the bottom and work our way up. I guess in starting, being a short wheelbase, it was always going to be a challenge to get all the gear in for national touring. So everything sort of had to have two purposes when I designed stuff. And again, soft top, not running the hard, I've got a hard top, but running the soft top, you've also got to be pretty clever because you tend to lose a bit more space for the soft top as well. The hard top tends to be more square. Uh -huh. So there's some challenges there. So I don't know where you want to start. Um, Black Widow drawers. Yeah, let's go there first. So pretty much everything there to repair it on the road toolkit oils etc etc that, that's that one there and then pretty much kitchen kitchen there chopping board a bit of your favorite snow peak gear i rate it it's pretty high salt pepper tea nice. coffee burners billies so that's all pretty modular and it goes deeper but you got to sort of dig stuff out after that Okay. So that works, that's there all the time, so I never unpack that. I actually don't drive the car much during the week, it's just an expedition car. Pretty standard for everyone, um, there was space to do it, so drop down table. Cool, um, looks like a DIY job that one. Yeah, I made that one. Piano hinge, so it kind of takes its own weight, and the reasoning around that was you can work on it without too much weight on it. Once you get a fair bit of weight, I've got the option of that. Yep. Ah, okay. But that prohibits that so obviously that's why it's loose that's why it's loose so you can still okay. do that any magnetic light here yes yeah, a little cheapy led always handy for something 
And just, I guess, toiletries, toothbrush, all the bits and pieces you want to get too quick. Um, it's not a first aid kit. That's the first aid kit there. Okay. But that's an old stick. It used to be a first aid kit. 40 litre? Um, yeah, I think it is 38, 40. It's, I, obviously, I bought it eight years ago. I kind of forget now, but it, it's uh, the good old MSA drop slide. You've all seen them, so I don't need to show you that. Um, one of the best modifications I, I made to it um, was that fridge cage. Yeah, keep things when going. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see it when you look at my recovery gear on this side. I can now pack right up to the fridge and not have everything sort of falling on itself. With all this recovery gear in here, yep. how do you get to it? Do you get to it from the window or? Ah. Yeah, Plus it's like I've never seen a soft top jet before. Yep. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up, not up so close it's a anyway. huge benefit. So I always carry a spare tent for emergency. Mm -hmm. Yep, I always carry a spare sleeping mat. Again, so if someone gets injured or hurt, hypothermia, and they've got a back injury or something, you can deal with them on the spot. Um, and I carry a spare sleeping bag as well. Yeah. Um, so that's just a safety thing. Again, always carry a tarp, lean to tarp, same, same situation if mm -hmm. the weather's bad and you need someone to um, work on them, first aid, you can cover them up. And the other, other reason, this is a great ripper tarp that I can put on here and with some poles, that's my awning. So it's like your awning. Yeah, it's a killer awning. So it's on there. Um, Recovery gear, so you got, straps. Yeah, you got your tree, tree protector. To keep it American, it's actually bubble rope. If you've ah, seen that stuff. Yeah, I've been wanting to give that a go. Yeah, so it's killer rating bubble rope. Is that 40% yep. stretch? I think it is, yeah. As opposed to 20? Yeah, I think it is. Strap? Mm. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Nice and gentle? Yeah, yeah, really mm. gentle, really gentle. So that's the bubble rope and the, the bubble thingamajig. Stop it rattling. Ah, yeah. Store it in there. And that's always handy. Killer jumper leads. I call the car, people call it the TARDIS. Because when you open it up, you start unpacking it. It's bigger than you think. Everything just starts coming out of it. Like a rabbit's hat. Like a yeah. Magician's yeah. hat. So the old tire plugs and stuff like that are there. Um, that thing. And cool. then that's what you spoke of before. That's the yep, auxiliary that's the battery. battery. And that's hooked up to uh, a Red Arc um, BCDC charger isolator. Which is... Which is behind the passenger seat. So more gear? So more gear, yeah. Basically, um, just the bench with tie downs and bits and pieces. And the way I roll, clothes bag. When I'm on my own, um, drift are always good for bags of stuff. So tent pegs and another tarp, a few bits mm -hmm. and pieces. Um, my cooking gear, I tend to, again, to keep it compact and lightweight, so I can just chuck it straight in. Um, you know, cast iron pot, big cast iron fry pan. Always got some pasta ready. Cooked that last night, and just anything to make a light meal and utensils is all in that. And that way it can tie it down. It's modular and it always stays there. Mm -hmm. So that's that one there. Clear lid so you can see what's in there. Clear lid is actually a key to it actually, yeah. Um, and you actually you inspired me to buy this one. I watched one of your early vids. You've seen this one before. Yep, fire pit. Good old fire pit, which is a winner. That's always in there. This was my favorite Christmas present from my missus. Yeah, they're good. After I saw yours. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Very put awesome. hot coals on it like you do, but <laughs> saw that. <laughs> Crazy. Um, that one there, spare sleeping bag, um, wash up tent, spare hat, sponge. Killer garbage bags. I don't know if you've discovered these Bunnings. No. They're actually masonry bags for, for gyp rocker guys and stuff. Ah. You could put concrete in it and masonry. And so they when don't you, split. Yeah, they do not split. They're killer. You buy them in a box of two rolls. How much is it? 15 bucks. Really? Yeah. Nice. They're, they're absolute killer. Yeah. So they're a winner. They're always in the car. Um, and then my all my fluids, basically. Is there ready? That's handy. Shoe box. <laughs> the Mrs. Country, right? And the one of the probably most important things I've realized because of the remote stuff I've been doing a lot in the last five or 10 years, is a bug out bag. Petrol car, if it burns down and I'm in the middle of Simpson, what, what do I need basically? So it always lives near the driver's seat here so I can crash into it here, yeah. grab it out, and I've got enough to survive. I've got water, 
every single survival thing is in this bag mm. from you know energy bars to space blankets to first aid kits to matches to it's all there everything okay. and my sat phone is either here yeah. and my spot epurb or it's right beside my driver's yeah. seat welcome to the interior of the jeep what was the jeep <laughs> that's jeep that's jeep steering wheel i like the height of this fridge here so how big is this fridge? Uh, 12 litre Waco, 11, 12, something like that. Okay. But it's a true fridge with a compressor. Yeah, for me it works well because that height there is actually that height there. Mm. So on long trips I can do 10, 12 hours yeah. in a shorty. CB radio. CB. 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 Yep. Copy CB. Yep. So that's one of the hidden ones. So being a soft top, uh, that's normally in the glove box. Because I like to keep the cabin with no thieves seeing stuff. Ah, righto. Because it's just one knife and you're straight into the car. Same out of sight, out of mind. Yep. That's your nav system, I take it? Yeah, just an iPad mini with, I run Hammer, Hammer Maps. I find that quite adequate. Mm. Pretty good. You can run your tunes through it to the radio. And you got a RAM mount. RAM mounts rock. I, I yeah, really I rate finally got one. Yeah, I rate them. They are awesome. Yeah. Especially the X mount. I've got one for the phone too that I didn't bring with me this time. Normally, X mount the phone there as well. Okay, behind me is a organizer. Yeah, pretty much organizer. And you go to for, I guess, worst case scenario, a bird book. Oh yeah. yeah. So when you're around camp, you always got to check out the birds. I should really uh, get one of those for the They're really good. They're the, cool. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point of interest for customers as well. What bird is that? It. Um, yeah, it's a black one with a red beak. Yeah. Safety wise, good old glass breaker, handy. For rollover, if, if and when it happens, someday it will. And your spot? Spot per same thing. Third gen? Yeah. I've got the first gen. Yeah, all good to go. Head torch is where they should be, ready to go. Where's your compressor? You're sitting on it. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you flip the seat forward and you can get to that then? Yeah, just the fittings under there with a, a, a coil of hose. She's oh, and your there. BCDC charger's behind here? It's directly behind you with a fuse box as well, and that's feeding yep. straight through the, the back battery. Okay. I yeah. think you mentioned your comms are behind here as well. Phone, yeah, I got a, like a dry box, radio. sat phone, a couple of radios, stuff like that. Okay, what's yeah. behind your seat then? Um, spare backpack and under my seat, because I do a lot of sand work and sometimes on my own, mm. um, there's one of those sand anchors, you know, the yeah. steel sand anchor thing. Yeah. But I've somehow managed to break it down and fit it under the seat. Oh, so it's like flat pack? Kind of flat pack, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it fits. Head and torch, there's a good spot for head torches. I've really yeah. got to start doing that myself because yep. I keep bloody losing one. This uh, interior, is this, this doesn't look like my dad's interior. Correct. One of the reasons I waited to buy this model, it was the last of the JKs that still had a lot of steel exposed. So I had a little bit of heritage back to the old Willys Jeeps and so the BJ40 Land Cruisers. Mm -hmm. So to make it look a bit more steel because it was white, I had this whole panel taken out um, and sprayed white. So it kind of matches white metal, but it also brightens the whole thing. So it's the same up. panel where you painted it? Yeah, same panel painted. That's a custom panel for all the rocker switches for lights and compressors and stuff like that. Oh, cool. um, and then you can probably see a lot of billet, billet aluminium mm. around. So everything here is just, it's just toy town in America. You just order online and yeah. it comes in the mail. And Sounds bill, dangerous. Bill out, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, very nice. Q and A on my soda stream today. Cheers. Cheers, mate. On the lemon squash. Ah. Uh, first question: Why did you choose this particular model Jeep? Um, good question. I guess earth moving background in Melbourne. That's my heritage. So always playing with trucks and tractors and driving. I grew up on. BJ 42s and driving them, high country mm -hmm. sort of stuff, dad's stuff, and built when I was 16, 17, a little F10 Daihatsu. Did a huge modification, chassis up, every bolt replaced, sleeker motor, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And that was my wicked little go to soft top, hard top car in the day, and a shorty. So I've always had an affection for shorties around ability um, in, you know, rock ledges, climbing, creek beds, maneuverability. 
all that sort of stuff. So it was always going to be shorty. And the Daihatsu that I built was great, except it had leaf springs all around. When the JK was coming out, I knew that this car was going to be the ultimate car. Five link front end, five link rear end, solid axle, cores all around, soft top, hard top, and finally a V6 engine, mm -hmm. which I was always going to supercharge, um, and six speed manual. So it, it, just, it just worked. So how long did this build take? I uh, bought the car in 2010, brand new. Um, got a list together probably two years before that, built a spreadsheet of all the components, researching in America on the different websites of what bull bar, what suspension, what whatever. Pretty much built in stages. First stage was getting it engineered on 37s. That took probably three or four years. South Australia is pretty difficult to get things through our pits and regency. Because I drive it really hard, um, I'm always testing its limits. It's been all around Australia now, except for Kimberley. I keep breaking stuff. What I've found is stuff made in America is marketed beautifully. Comes in a nice wooden box with straw. You pull out the box, mm. you put on the car, it's shiny, it lasts a year. It either rusts, breaks or cracks or deteriorates. Not it made was for Australian conditions. Not made for Australian conditions. And so I had to build the Jeep as a tourer for Australia. So it just took a lot of testing product, breaking mm. and pulling it off. So three or four sets of suspension, et cetera, et cetera. If I came to you with a standard JK, short wheelbase vehicle, and I'm not going to take it to this level because that's a lot of research and dedication, but for people who have a JK like this, yep. what's the first three things you recommend for them to do, or is there more <laughs> than that? I can tell you exactly, because we did a high country trip. I led about two weeks or last week, and we had a young fella, one of the bloke's sons, 18-year-old uh, had bought a brand new Jeep like your dad's four-door mm -hmm. and he had no modifications but he did a good job following us and we had that discussion and it's basically tyres so mm -hmm. you can keep a standard wheels just get a set of 33s on standard wheels uh, you need a slight lift because they, they don't have great ground clearance as a standard Jeep and two-inch pucks you don't need bigger springs just put the, the spaces like little hockey plastic pucks in okay they cost like a hundred bucks for a set out of America and for him because we did a river crossing and the water came over his bonnet, he didn't have a snorkel. Oh. Um, if it's high country stuff, snorkel. Easy to modify, very easy to modify. Yeah, they are easy to modify. But yeah. hard to get reliable. Aside from the engine, what are the best three mods you've done to this vehicle? Because your engine would be number one, so let's just... Engine's number one, just the torque, mm -hmm. and it'll just pull from, it'll pull from 500 RPM in That's first incredible gear, for a petrol. Fully loaded up a 30 degree slope, Foot off the clutch, first gear, it'll pull at 500 RPM, won't stall. No pinging, no nothing. So yeah, engine, number one, that rear tyre assembly as a unit because mm -hmm. of the amount of work it does, be it high lift jack, you know, roof rack, um, fuel tank. I could tell you are very tank. impressed with it when you are talking about it. Yeah. Or it is pretty impressive. It's, it's, it's amazing. Mounted. It wouldn't, without that back rack, I couldn't tour in this car. I'd have to build a roof rack over the soft top. With or the... With the the poles the outside, and then that's yeah. just not Jeep. It just doesn't look Jeep. I've got a hard top for it as well, with a ARB rooftop camper and a full um, Rhino platform on it, and I could put a spare tire on that and the hard top, mm -hmm. and I can run that, but I choose not to now because I tend to drive extreme, and there would have been three or four occasions now where I definitely would have rolled the car had I had the hard top on, mm -hmm. but the soft top, low center of gravity saved me. And your third thing? Oh, it's, that's only two, isn't it? Suspension. It just, you'll drive it later now, today. Now you've got it right. It just yeah. takes the hits. It, you can just, you can just rally the thing. You can actually punish this thing and it, it just absorbs it. Yeah. It's incredible. I, yep. I was worried yesterday when you went up that hill really fast. I was like, yep, I'm going to need a new spine after this. <laughs> and just, no. Yeah. <laughs> it was all right. Yeah. They, they have really long coils in the Jeep anyway. Mm. And these are the extra long. But um, the, are the ARB be ARBBP 51s, that's hard to say, um, are awesome too. They're the best set of shocks I've had on it, combined with the hydraulic bump stops. So mm. the whole thing works as a unit. Um, and when it when it all turns to poo and you, you you jump it when you didn't mean to jump it, you've got that confidence that you can lay on the jump, cars settle, go again. Worst thing about the Jeep? Uh, reliability, yeah. Best thing about the Jeep? quality. I guess why I bought a shorty, because it's, it's the first four-wheel drive that they made back in 1941. It was the heritage of four-wheel drives. Mm. And being a shorty, it still looks like the original military Jeep. 
and I've heard now the new model, they're actually not making the shorty in manual anymore. So in a way, I'm really pleased they've done that because I actually own the last proper manual true short wheelbase Jeep because uh, they're all going to be auto from here on in. With the metal trims on the inside. Yeah, so it's still a bit retro. Thank you very much, CB. <laughs> Thanks, man. Bringing the Jeep on. It's an incredible machine, I've got to say. Yep. And I believe we're going to go for another drive now. Yep. And thanks, bro, for coming to Jacob Farm. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah. Pleasure. Subscribe somewhere here, and you can support the creation of content like this and other modified episodes and all the other stuff we do at patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale. I said it right this time. And then down here we have another Jeep. Cheers. Cheers.